Oswald Chambers was born in Aberdeen, Scotland, July 24, 1874, to the family of Clarence Chambers. He was one of seven children in their family. Clarence Chambers was a minister in the Crown Terrace Baptist Church. When Oswald was 15, he and his family moved to London, where he studied at the Royal Academy of Art and received a certificate to study in Europe. Chambers declined this offer because he did not want to be lured by the success of the world. Later, he enrolled in the University of Edinburgh. After living in Edinburgh for a year, he faced what he called a dark night of the soul. Several incidents happened to test his faith, and he became aware of the old and new creation inside him. Oswald moved to Dunhoon and attended a small theological training school led by Reverend Duncan McGregor. He became a close friend to Reverend McGregor. McGregor provided living space for the students in his own home. The house provided plenty of room for people to gather, have classes and lectures, eat together, and roam the extensive grounds. The McGregor children loved Oswald because of his pleasing and inviting nature. After completing his training, he was ordained a minister. Later in his life, Oswald became involved with the League of Prayer. Chambers made many missionary trips. On one of his trips, he escorted a young lady by the name of Gertrude Hobbs. Oswald took delight in her company and later gave her the name Biddy, which was short for Beloved Disciple. After writing to each other for two years, Oswald asked for her hand at St. Paul's Cathedral. Chambers and Biddy were married at the Walford Green Memorial Wesleyan Methodist Church by his brother Arthur into a six-story communal house rented by the League of Prayer. The large house became a Bible training college that would open in January for residents and day students. The house could accommodate 25 resident students and seat 50 for meals. Chambers' office was said to always be open to students who wanted to talk. The Bible training college's motto was whosoever will may come. Biddy was always ready to prepare a room for any visitors who needed a warm place to stay. Oswald and Biddy enjoyed the students' company and formed many relationships with them. When Kathleen Chambers was born, everyone in the house rejoiced. In 1914, World War I began, and in October, Chambers joined the Young Men's Christian Association at the front in Cairo, Egypt. He worked at Camp Zaitun. Oswald preached fiery sermons that brought many to Jesus. Later, Biddy and Kathleen came to the camp. Biddy immediately made the soldiers feel at home with her gift of making a homely environment. From March to April, Chambers traveled around Egypt to do outreaches. He kept a tight schedule. He preached often, taught classes, and visited men in hospitals when others were resting from the extreme heat. Biddy was always cooking, cleaning, and writing down all Oswald's preachings. Chambers and Biddy created a free tea program every week. During Oswald's time in his Beckia Gardens, he fell ill and suffered a miserable, sleepless night. He refused to go to the hospital. He would not take a bed that might be needed by a wounded soldier, because a campaign had just been launched and there would be many casualties. On October 29th, the pain returned with furiosity this time. He allowed himself to be taken to the hospital. He had to have immediate surgery, which proved successful until two weeks later. Oswald took a turn for the worst. He died November 15, 1917, but the soldiers asked if they could honor Oswald their way. A hundred other soldiers volunteered to march as escort. Biddy and Kathleen moved back to England after his funeral. By 1927, after three years of compiling and editing, Biddy was able to publish 365 daily readings into what was to become hers and Oswald Chambers' most lasting legacy, my utmost for his highest. Oswald Chambers' life was of preaching and serving.